Hi everyone, my name is Jeff Starr, and this is my channel, Not Bad Films. So I feel a little um, weird about making a video <laughs> right now uh, because we have this um, COVID-19 or novel coronavirus 2019 outbreak happening across the U.S. and, and in New York City, um, and, and where I am in, in this, the New York State and the country just in general and across the whole world, right? Um, some areas have been hit really hard. The news coming out of Italy is, is very uh, sad, sobering. I'm not sure what the right word is there. Um, and certainly, please, um, you know, if you, you, you got you to gotta self-isolate and make sure you're not spreading germs. If you're feeling sick, stay away from others. And um, if you can get tested, get tested. This was supposed to be like a, hey, a fun guitar video, right? So I think that's sort of um, why I feel weird because I don't want to make a, it feels weird to make a fun, hey, hey, let's have fun video um, when there's like a lot of serious stuff right now. At the same time, um, a lot of people, myself included, are very much stuck um, not being able to go out and, and do fun things and socialize and... Um, and YouTube is, um, it's a creative outlet for me. It's a place for me to just sort of make some stuff. So, you know, we're all sitting around with nothing to do. Maybe now is the right time to make a fun video. So I'm not gonna be worried too much about going long on this one because um, I'm not going anywhere <laughs> uh, for a while. And, um, you know, just wash your hands. To try not to touch your face. Um, wash your hands for 20 seconds, you know. Remember, like I said, if you're sick, don't go out. Try not to go out at all. Let's talk about guitars. So, <laughs> let's, let's shift gears. Talk about something fun, um, which is I bought a while back now, but I haven't made a video about it yet. Uh, I bought my first vintage guitar, which is exciting for me because I've never done that before. Um, don't touch your face. <laughs> and um, so I bought my first vintage guitar and that's very exciting for me. And, and I want to make a video about that and I'm going to play a little bit and I'll also tell you about it. So hold on, let me go get it. I'm going to go get it now. This is it here. Try not to trip on this mic cable. So uh, this is it here. Um, this is a, a 1980 Firebrand The Paul Deluxe. So the Firebrand line, instead of um, decaling or silkscreening the Gibson logo, they actually branded it into the wood and sort of burned it in. There's a, an, an SG version of that, I think just called the SG. Um, and then there's the Paul. Um, and the Paul, instead of being a mahogany body, it's, a, it's walnut. Well, this, this is a little bit different because they later they stopped doing that branding um, into the actual wood and they started um, some deluxe models. So the deluxe is, is different. It, it's not um, walnut. It, um, it's mahogany. There were very few color runs done for these um, sort of the later years. The Gibson catalog starts talking about colors, I believe, in 81. Uh, but this is an 80 based on a serial number. I emailed Gibson to confirm that serial number. Um, I was thought first, was this refinished? It is not, as far as I can tell. Um, quick ways you can sort of check that is if you remove screws from areas that, that would have been, um, say, around pickups or the plate. Um, if, in the, if the screw holes are, are wood, that's usually, we'll let you know, versus having paint in them. Um, from when it would have been refinished. This is not. You can go online, you'll see some of these, this color, this, it's not a, it's not a Pelham blue, like a faded Pelham blue or an aged Pelham blue. It's a, it's some sort of Iverness green or, I'm not totally sure exactly what, what this color is in the Gibson catalog, but there are, you can see a bunch of these um, online if you, if you look at past reverb um, listings or just in general. Um, you'll see on the headstock here. Let's, let's stand up. 
Let's see, it says Firebrand The Paul Deluxe. There's a sticker on there. No need to take that off now. It sort of, sort of gives the guitar some character or whatever. Now, why this guitar? I think that's the interesting question, right? That you're probably wondering. Why would I buy this um, green The Paul Firebrand Deluxe? Well, um, I was born in 1980, and I've been looking for a 1980 um, Gibson. One of the reasons I like that is because Gibson serial numbers, um, if you know anything about their serial number dating, it's very easy to find out the exact year and even the exact day of its serial number. Now, for a while I've been searching for a, um, a Gibson Les Paul, pref preferably, although I, any sort of Gibson model that had a serial number of my actual birthday. And that came about because a while back I had found a on, on a reverb listing, a SG from 1980 or, or 81, where the pickups in that era, they have um, um, stamps in them to say their date of manufacture. Not all of them, but a lot of them do. And it had the stamp of my birthday. And I was like, oh, that's amazing. I was really into SGs at the time. And I was like, hey, let's get an SG with my actual birthday. Well, that guitar, um, it came and went. I didn't have money for it, um, and it sold, and that was that, and it was a bummer. It was sort of like a fun thing that I started to look for, and then, of course, I randomly came across a The Paul from 1981, where the pickup was also my birthday, um, and I was like, oh, that's really awesome. Like, oh, maybe, maybe I should buy that. It's not that expensive. It was not a deluxe, but it had a cracked headstock, or, or at least the, the fingerboard was peeling up, and it looked like it'd been glued down at some point. So who knows what else had been going on up there? And then literally, like about ten minutes later, just going through reverb listings, I saw this guitar, which the bridge pickup uh, is a is a Tim Shaw design pickup, and it has my birthday stamped on it. And it's actually 1980, it's not 81. And I, on humbucker guitars, I tend to really only play the, the bridge pickup, or at least that's my preferred place. Um, the other pickup in this is a T-top. Um, first thing I did pretty much after I restrung, when I went to restring this guitar is of course, checked, took this pickup out and actually looked at it to make sure it actually had the real date on it. Now, I like uh, Gibson guitars from the, from the 80s, um, specifically that, that early 80s period. I know that some people are not into the the three-piece neck. I don't mind that. Um, I like a volute. I like the way a volute feels. I know that was something that was added during that sort of Norland era that people sometimes don't like. But I actually like a volute on a guitar. I like the way it feels. I like the way it looks. Um, I like these um, metal machine um, heads, tuning tuning pegs. I've always liked that. The sort of the funny story about that is I I was looking at a a vintage Harmony H44. This is about 10 years ago. And I was at the music store and it was for the, the prices on those had gone up. They hadn't gone up drastically. They were about 500 to $700 at the time. And uh, it was play, it played nice. It was a good guitar. Different, obviously very different than this. And it was a little out of tune. I went to tune it and I had immediately stopped because I could tell that the, the, uh, <laughs> that plastic machine head, um, probably some sort of Bakelite plastic, was just going to immediately just crumble under any sort of torque. And in my head I was like, ooh, I don't like that. <laughs> so I figured if I was ever going to buy something vintage down the road, um, because that guitar was not going to be the one, <laughs> I thought, I like metal. I like, I like the durability of metal. So that was a cool bonus thing, which which uh, just happened to make this sort of work on a lot of features. I tend to like sort of a, a surfy green color, right? I have this. Um, my Dan Electro Cool Cat Chorus is sort of a, an aqua -y green. This is sort of more of a green green, but, you know, whatever. You get the idea. So there was just, it was a nice guitar. Now, the other thing about these is that they're sort of thin. Um, you know, unlike a, you know, the, 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 these are not super light guitars. They're, they have some weight to them. Um, but they're a little bit more like an SG in that sense. The way they sort of sit on the body, the way they sort of, the thinness, 
they're, they're sort of a light carve on the top here, sort of a little bit more like a, an SG, you see a little bit there. There's some wear on this guitar, nothing crazy, sort of all honest. A little wear here and there. Nothing bad though. A few little minor sort of scuffs and scrapes. No neck breaks. It looks like this might have been on a, on a hanger at some point. There's a little bit of a um, stain there. Some of the older guitar hangers, the, the, the rubber might sort of react with it. No sort of cigarette mark or anything though. That's what I was, I was checking to make sure it was that. Um, ebony. It's an ebony fingerboard. I really like ebony fingerboards a lot. It's obviously quite hard to get ebony now. Um, it's very expensive. For, you know, because it's just supply, um, you know, sustainability issues, whatnot. I think a lot of Taylor guitars maybe now have ebony on them. Um, but I've always liked sort of De Les Paul Deluxes that, because they traditionally had ebony. Really nice frets on this. Um, plays great. It's a really, really nice guitar. So that's sort of the story of how I ended up coming across this. And then, of course, the price on this, um, it had been... These are generally, I think sort of in the $1,200 range, but it had been marked down and um, I got a very good deal on it. Um, I did try to see if, if we were open to any offers to go any lower on that, but, but that was not sort of where that seller was. And I sort of figured, eh, you know, how often, hello, let's focus. So I figured, you know, with, with having lost the, that SG, that I was looking at years prior, I figured this probably aren't going to come up a ton. Um, although ironically, I had, I had found one out, you know, maybe, like I said, 10 minutes prior, but it had that neck break. So um, this seemed like a way to go. It was a little bit risky. I was nervous. I'd never played one of these. You know, I sort of knew what the, the width of the nut would be, the neck shape. I liked ebony. Um, so I figured, yeah, let's, let's do it. And I've been really happy with it. So that's this is the sort of story of how I came across and how I f recently purchased my first uh, vintage guitar. Let's hear some audio. Put on headphones too. I'll probably put some stuff in stereo. Uh, I got a stereo set up. I got my new full tone Supa Trem 2 version 2 stereo auto panner. So that's probably going to get way too much use in the mix. But who cares? All right, let's go make some music. <laughs> One of the things I, I didn't say about this guitar, but now having played all that, I want to add is that the sustain on this instrument is just really amazing. But it had reminded me that I had a former coworker that had um, one of the walnut, uh, the Pauls, and he, he had talked to me about how it sustained really incredible. This is years ago. Something about I, I think the pickups on this guitar are very dynamic and touch sensitive. It's sort of weird to say that about the pickup because I usually think about that about amps or like a, a specific um, overdrive pedal or something, but my rig hasn't changed. It's the exact same that I would use through my, with my baritone or my Strat or this sort of 335-esque semi-hollow body guitar. And it's just more touch sensitive. And I, I think that's, these are, maybe the output on these is higher than I may be used to, I don't know. I tend to do a lot of open strings ringing out that then maybe I, I play over. And so that allows me to play sometimes very softly um, over oh, as a lead line with very light touch. It still is coming through, but because the sustain, I cannot talk, because the sustain is still there, um, it's not like everything's died out and just so the sound sort of like fitters fizzles out. The sustain is sort of underneath things still, and, and that allows you to sort of play with that as the note decays really nicely, but like sort of hovers, it gives you that, that space to sort of 
play really quietly and then hit things hard and let it come through. So it, it sort of allows for more dynamic playing. So I wanted to make sure I mentioned that. So that's the story of how I came across and ended up buying my first vintage guitar, uh, a, a Gibson Firebrand The Paul Deluxe with a Tim Shaw bridge humbucker with a stamp date of my birthday. Now uh, I don't know when your birthday is, but generally when guitars get about 30 years old, we consider them vintage. So you know. If you're born in the 90s, swoop it up now. <laughs> I've been surprised. There's a, it's sort of, well, I've been down a rabbit hole because I've had nothing else to do, right? Because I can't go anywhere. Um, and there's, a, so I, I have a list of the guitars that got away, the ones I've always liked, you know? Um, and some there's some great fenders from the 90s that at the time there was, I couldn't afford or get at all because I was a teenager without a job or I was a college student without a job and um, don't touch your face don't touch your face um, anyway so um, those guitars are not that expensive right now because they're still sort of used they're not vintage yet um, although some are so hopefully you like this um, like comment subscribe but most importantly uh, get your instrument practice um, pra you know, practice social distancing as well from all of your um, neighbors and friends and, and, and especially anyone who is a high risk, um, you know, the elderly and, and uh, anyone with, with um, pre-existing conditions in terms of like, let's say specifically lung things. Um, this virus is no fun, but at least we can, um, if we have to be inside, hopefully you can play your guitar and uh or or whatever instrument you have and um celebrate celebrate life that way all right thank you so much for watching
Good luck out there. Happy practicing. Bye.